Welcome back. In the last video, we talked about cellulose and how cellulose has a basic carbon structure to allow us to make all the chemicals we currently make from petroleum. In this video, we're going to cover something related, which is the next dot point, which says, discuss the need for alternative sources of the compounds presently obtained from petrochemicals. So again, that word petrochemicals comes, there's two parts of that word. There's petrol or petro, which is the same as petroleum and chemicals. So that means all the actual chemicals that we're currently making from petroleum. So petroleum was the same as oil. So the actual syllabus dot point asks us why do we need to have an alternative source? So alternative source refers to something which is not the same as petrol. Why do we need to have an alternative source to make the same chemicals that we're currently making from petroleum? So, for example, we're making plastics, ethanol, um, plastics, petrol, all that kind of stuff, all those chemicals, we're making them from petroleum. Why do we need to have an alternative? Discuss needs for an alternative source to making these petrochemicals. So first, I figured we we're going to go over what fossil fuels are, because that word comes up quite a bit. and also came up in your 11 course as well, in your 11 course. Fossils refers to sort of ancient dead thing, ancient dead organisms, ancient dead organisms. And an organism is just anything that's living. So it could be a plant, could be an animal, it could be a bacteria. Fossils are ancient dead organisms and fuels means that we make energy out of them. So we use those dead organisms to make energy. So fossil fuels are dead organisms that we use to make energy. Now there's a couple of steps involved when it comes to creating fossil fuels. The first is that an organism has to, an organism has to die. So for example, that plants, animals, or bacteria, because they're all organisms, they have to die. So in this diagram below here, we've got um, these plants being living. Now, in the second step, they have died. So this is the die stage. Now, after they've died, what has to happen is they have to have to be covered by sediment. And sediment is similar to just um, soil. In most cases, it's soil. It can be something else as well. But here in that, in that third step, we can see these dead trees have been covered. So here they're covered. And that happens because soil often just come, goes over, like it just happens over time. So we have, first we have these forests breaking down, dying, then they're covered by sediment. And last step is that you need to have high pressure, which is made by that soil compressing, that pressing down on, that, on the coal, or on the actual trees, high pressure and millions of years. So here, we've got high pressure because of this stuff, so the sediment and the, and the layer on top push down on the trees and high pressure and millions of years allow us to make coal. That's how we produce coal. Coal is an example of fossil fuels because coal is an ancient dead organism, so in this case it's a tree that has broken down and been turned to coal over millions of years, so this takes millions of years, and we can use coal to make energy. So coal is a fossil fuel, and oil is also a fossil fuel, because oil is actually that plankton. Plankton is a form of bacteria. These, So here they, they're dying. You can imagine this is the stage one where they're dying. So organisms die here. Then they're covered by sediment. So here this is the, the sediment. They die, and then they go down, and they're somewhere here covered by sediment, that was step two. And then the last step was that high pressure and millions of years produces, from those planktons, produces oil. So plankton themselves turn into oil over millions of years. And oil is again, oil is a fossil fuel because it's a fossil, so it's made from dead bacteria, which is an organism. And it's a fuel because we can use oil to fuel our cars and fuel our economy as well. So both coal and oil are examples of fossil fuels. And oil is the same as petroleum. And remember, we make most of our plastics and other chemicals, our petrochemicals, we make them from petroleum. So we make them from oil. So the actual dot point says, discuss the need for alternative sources of compounds presently obtained from petrochemical industry. So why do we need to have an alternative to chemicals that we currently make from oil? So the first point was obviously that we have a finite supply. What I mean with finite, the word finite just means 
limited. So the opposite of unlimited, limited means it's going to run out at some stage. So finite means limited supply. And limited supply of petroleum. So um, it's actually going to run out for Australia in about 10 years. So our Australian oil supply is going to run out in 10 years. And for the rest of the world, we're going to be um, out of oil in roughly 50 years. Or by 50 years, at least, it's going to be very expensive. So this is the whole diagram here. We've got peak oil. We are actually, at the moment, at peak oil. So we are at the stage where we have used up more than half of our oil, which means the more we spend, the more time we invest into using only oil, the less oil we have, and at some stage we're going to run out. And if we run out, we're not going to be able to make more petrochemicals because petrochemicals need oil to be, to be useful, to be made itself. Right? So one first reason why we need to have an alternative source, so something else than petroleum, was that petroleum is a finite resource, finite resource, you can use that word as well, finite resource, um, and its supply lasts only for a certain period of time, 10 years for Australia, 50 years for the rest of the world, and Australians will obviously be, be buying more and more foreign oil as their oil runs out, we've already been doing that as well. So that was the first problem, that we have only a limited amount, second problem was that it's non-decomposable, what I mean by that, I wrote plastics takes thousands of years to decay, and the same decay, the other word for decay can be just broken down. So it takes thousands of years to be broken down. So you can imagine if you just, um, for example, toss a plastic bag or toss a plastic bottle into the ocean, it's going to stay there for thousands of years. It's not going to be broken down by itself. And the reason why is because it's made from fossil fuels. It might be made from petroleum. And petroleum, the products from the petroleum, they don't decompose. They don't break down. So if we can make an alternative source, which we'll actually talk about in the next video, we can make plastics which decompose sooner. Right? So using not petroleum, using something else, we can make plastics that don't take thousands of years to decompose. They will decompose a lot faster. And the third reason why you need to have alternative sources is because um, high CO2 emissions. So if someone's kept in touch with global warming, Global, one of the reasons why we believe global warming happens is because of CO2, because of carbon dioxide emission. And when we use petrol for cars, so petrol produces more pollution. It produces a lot of, so petrol produces a lot of this CO2. And we believe that CO2 is what's causing most of our global warming. So if we can reduce our, so if we can produce something else than petroleum, for example, ethanol, we believe that we can make it more clean, less pollution, um, so whereas petrol itself is very high in CO2 emission. And that's the same diagram here. We've got fossil fuels, so we harvest them, then we make them into oil, and we use them, and then they go into the atmosphere. There's no, there's no chain, there's no circle here. Once we've used them, they're gone. Whereas with biomass, so for example, cellulose being one example of an alternative source we can use, biomass, we can grow them, we can um, use them, and then much of it, what that we've used, will go back, and we can do it again, because trees absorb the CO2, so it's a, it's a cycle. With biomass, it's a cycle, whereas with fossil fuels, it's a one-way. We, we mine it, or we harvest it, and then we burn it, and it's in the atmosphere. Whereas with um, biomass, it's more of a complete circle. So I'll go over the three reasons why we need to make sure we have an alternative source, something else than petroleum. The first is that we have a finite supply, which means we have a limited supply. Um, at some stage, it will run out. For Australia, our oil supply lasts for 10 years. We will have to buy more and more foreign oil, which we're doing at the moment, but it's going to get more expensive. For the rest of the world, um, it's going to be about 50 years. Also, um, it's not decomposable, especially the plastic that we make from petroleum. So our petrochemicals, such as plastics, they don't decompose because we're using petroleum, not an alternative source. That means it's going to take thousands of years to break down, which is bad for our environment. So if we can make a decomposable plastic, that would be better. Also, we have high CO2 emissions, and petrol produces much more, much more pollution, especially much more CO2 um, emissions. So if we can get a chemical which is not petrol, an alternative source, um, then we will be able to make it cleaner as well. So it would be good for our environment and reduces global warming as well.
So those are the three reasons why I need to have an alternative source. And yeah, make sure you also have an understanding of what fossil fuels are and how long they take. So they take millions of years to produce. That's also important. So I hope that was useful.